What's going on guys, my name's Theoatrix and welcome to my guide to killing revenants. This guide will take you through everything you need to know to kill them, including some background info, how to get there, your gear and inventory, the strategies, and lastly the drops and how they work. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Pretty much any level player can kill Revenant since there's a wide range of different types of them, but the dungeon is a PK hotspot with almost every level of PKer. Since so much money can be made from killing the Revenants, PKers lurk around the cave all the time. Because of that, it's very recommended to have at least 43 prayer so you can use the protection prayers, in particular protect from magic, when you're trying to get away from those PKers. You can be assigned Revenants as a Slayer task from Crystillia, which is the Wilderness Slayer Master, and that lets you take advantage of the damage bonus from the Slayer Helmet or the Black Mask. Revs, of course, can also be killed normally. Using a bracelet of Aetherum that is charged with Revenant Aether makes all of the Revenants unaggressive and unable to deal any damage to you whatsoever. Each hit that a Revenant does to you uses one Revenant Aether, which means it costs about 82 coins per hit at this point in time. It is very recommended to use this bracelet, but for some Iron Men, this isn't really possible. In terms of getting to the Revenants, there are two entrances to the Farin 3 dungeon. The Revenants are located closer to the level 40 Wilderness entrance, but can still be accessed from the level 17 entrance. The fastest way to the Revenants themselves is to use a Revenant Cave Teleport, and that takes you directly north of the entrance of the High Level Cave. The second fastest way to the Revenants is to make a Wacker Canoe with 57 woodcutting and sail all the way into the Wilderness. This takes you really close to the Deep Wilderness entrance, and you just have to run a little bit northwest to go in. The third fastest way there is to use the Wilderness Obelisks, and if you've done the Wilderness Hard Diaries and you've built an obelisk inside your player-owned house, getting there this way is very recommended. Alternatively, if you have none of those, then a Burning Amulet teleporting to the Lava Maze is your best option there, but there's a higher chance of running into PKs. If you get teleport blocked at Revenants, almost always you'll get piled by a team. If you have 89 agility, you have a much, much better chance of getting away from PKers since there's a shortcut near the Revenants that not many people can access. Now for your gear and inventory. At lower levels, you should always be using the best weapons you can. Since you have a lower accuracy at a lower level, you should focus on faster weapons like the Rune Scimitar or the Magic Shortbow. Pewers can take a Rune Crossbow with Diamond Bolts E or a Blowpipe works very well if you have the range level. I'd like to go over the best in slot items to take and some alternatives that are a bit cheaper and have lower requirements. It is highly, highly recommended to have a Salve Amulet, which you can obtain after completing the Haunted Mine quest, and that'll give you a 15% attack and strength boost on the Revenants. You can also imbue your Salve Amulet with 800,000 Nightmare Zone points, and this boosts your ranged and magic as well. Enchanting the Salve Amulet boosts those percentages up to 20%. It's worth noting though that the Salve Amulet does not stack with the Slayer Helmet. Just recently, there were three new weapons and a new amulet that are dropped by Revs. All three of these new weapons give a 50% damage and accuracy boost on any Wilderness non-player character. Each attack you use with one of these weapons uses one Revenant Aether, which isn't that expensive. The two best ones for Revenants are Crossbow and Vigorous Mace. Since the Scepter requires runes and it doesn't have an inbuilt magic spell, you have to bring runes with you, which increases your risk a lot, so it's not really the best for Revs. Crossbow is arguably the most powerful, but it is very expensive right now. The Amulet of Avarice makes every single drop inside the cave noted. But whenever you're wearing the amulet, you'll have a skull, and when you take off the amulet, you'll still have a skull for 20 minutes. So it's not the best for Revenants, but it could be handy at a lower level when you don't have very expensive weaponry and armor. Right now, I'm going to show you guys the best in slot setup for ranged. Black Dehyde's your best bet at the Revenant since it's so cheap and it could save you from getting PK'd with its high magic defense. 
Alternatively, if you have an unlocked black dehyde, the other dehydes are really good. Or if you're a pure, you can wear monk's robes. Always keep in mind that you can only keep three items on death. I know you can use protect item, but a lot of the time people are going to be using smite and it's multi-combat, so there's a good chance that you'll lose all your prayer points. Most of the time, people will bring three very expensive items and then one that isn't so expensive but is still really helpful. The blowpipe with high tier darts is easily one of the most powerful weapons to kill revenants with. This is what most players use at revenants, but some players use melee. And on the screen right now, I've put the best melee setup and all of the alternatives next to it. The main thing to know here is that revenants are weak to crush, but not super weak to crush. So other attack styles are still going to work. Vigorous Chain Mace is the best for melee, and the Elder Maul comes second due to its massive hits, which give you a pretty good chance of getting the drop. The Saradoman Sword is a great option, or the Abyssal Whip works as well, but always keep in mind that you should not take your defenders into the Wilderness if you're going to lose them on death. You can't get them back if you go above level 30 Wilderness, and that's the same with all untradeables, so don't take a Fire Cape or an Inferno Cape. I'd now like to go over some extra items that are useful at Revenants. It's always a good idea to have a teleport that can take you out from level 30 Wilderness. This can be something like Dragonstone Jewelry, or if you'd like to risk a little bit less, you can take a Grand Seed Pod or the Slayer Ring. Phoenix Necklaces are also very recommended at the Revenants, and basically what these do is they restore your hit points by 30% of your total health when you go below 20% of your health. Din's Bulwark is often taken by some players, especially now since the Revenants are so popular. The two-handed shield needs 75 attack and defense to wear, and it has very high defense bonuses. Also, be very careful with the special attack. Since it deals damage in an area, there is a good chance of you sculling on someone nearby, so don't use the special. The next item is a looting bag, and you can buy this from the Bounty Hunter store, or you can kill any monster in the wilderness and they have a chance at giving you one. A lot of players choose not to take a looting bag, since you do lose them on death, and a lot of the time you'll run into PKs before finishing one inventory of food anyway. If you want to learn how to get cheap Bounty Hunter points, I've made a video about that before, and I'll put a card at the end of this video if you'd like to watch that. You can also take high level alchemy to the revenants since there's a lot of alchemical drops, but once again, some people don't since rev trips don't really last all that long. In your inventory, I highly recommend taking a mix of sharks and karamb ones and a saradoman brew if you want to restore your health even more. You should bring a combat boosting potion like a super combat potion or a ranging potion. A stamina potion is very recommended for getting away from PKers and for getting to the dungeon. Revenants actually heal themselves whenever their health goes below 50%. They only have a limited number of heals though, so eventually you'll hit through all of their heals, resulting in them dying. When you're attacking Revenants, always try to be the first one to get an attack so you can do as many attacks on the Revenant as possible. The drops are dependent on who does the most damage. You'll notice that for a lot of the higher level Revenants, there is a lot of competition between players to who can get the most damage. If you're a low-level player, you can hang around the Revenant Imps and Goblins and try to one-hit those low-level Revenants because attacking the high-level ones with other high-level players around is pointless. If a PK comes along, you should always make sure you're using the appropriate prayer switches. Wearing full black Dehyde and the Dins is a great way of lowering the accuracy from the PKers, and whenever a PKer attacks you with magic, like freezing or teleblocking, you should always turn on your highest magic boosting prayer and protect from magic. Magic boosting prayers increase your magic defense, and if you have augury, there's a much better chance of getting out of a PK scenario. If you've been teleblocked and then frozen, you should only be using magic boosting prayers and turn on protect from range and switch to protect melee when PKers come closer to you. Now I'd like to quickly go over the drop table. Every revenant has the same drop table, but the high level revenants have a much better chance at dropping the rarer items. There's a lot of rune and dragon items that are dropped by revs. There's a lot of runes and other resources that are useful for skilling, like nine magic seeds. What? There's the crossbow, the scepter, and the new chain mace, which are all dropped very rarely from revenants. And lastly, there's the ancient statuettes, where these statues can only be traded in for cash at the emblem trader inside the revenant caves. And in order to trade it in, 
you have to be on the official bounty hunter well, so that's unbelievably risky. These ancient statuettes all can be sold on the Grand Exchange as well, but it's worth noting though, if you get one as a drop, you will always lose it on death. So don't think that you'll keep it since it's more expensive than your items, you will always drop it when you die. Personally, I would not risk going on a bounty hunter world and trading with the emblem trader there. You're much better off selling it to the Grand Exchange and let someone else do that for you. So overall, due to the amount of PKers, the money you can make per hour at Revenants is very debatable. If you'd like to view the written version of this guide, go check out theoatrix.net slash Revenants, and you can read everything I said in this video and see some extra pictures that I've added there. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.